what up guys so yesterday i'm on a pm in a building i got a water source heat pump here that uh this is half storage room so we got a bunch of crap in here uh, i was just putting stuff up the other day i heard this guy humming uh, it didn't sound like a compressor was running it sounded like the blower motor um could be the compressor so i'm gonna dig into this guy and see if we can't uh figure out what's going on start by getting 80 screws out. I do have the power turned off. Hey. Morning. One screw can't reach. felt some uh the blower wasn't spinning freely it seems okay and i don't see any obstructions but i got a whole lot of oil right there on that capacitor so that could be what i heard humming and maybe i had a lockout i wish i had seen the lockout but um we can kick it back on and see what it does. The blower might run now just because it's cooled down. Uh, let's check that capacitor first. A little stubby to the rescue. That barely fits in there too. Point nine. So how is it to twenty? So it is low. Yeah, so about seventeen. Uh, it's plus or minus six percent, but that it's got to go. And we'll turn this guy back on and see uh, see if anything else hums. We'll make sure the compressor runs. Everything looks okay down below. I don't see any major issues with the refrigerant circuit. I am going to go ahead and do a PM, so I'm going to blow all of this out, uh, clean the drain line, flush everything. We might even flush the condenser water. Um, it's a closed loop. I don't. I haven't had too many problems out of these, so I'm not terribly concerned about the refrigeration circuit. But we're going to at least take some temperature readings and see what's going on once we get it running. I think it's going to be all right. I have a feeling that just that blower motor locked up. The blower motor might still have a problem. New capacitor. Let's go ahead and test the new one out. I'm sure the new one's fine. 20 to, I'm happy with that. Well, let's try to get this thing back in here and make sure our connections are tight. Snapped on there pretty good. Make sure all the terminals are covered. And we'll date it. Hey man, what's, what's up, man? Pops? Not much is happening. Everything been all right? Y'all working on? Uh, we're just doing a wellness check right now. Cool. That's a nasty shit, man. Let's go ahead and get the power on and see what happens. I am going to get in and inspect it. This side of the motor didn't have anything. I'm going to try to get a mirror back in here. I can't see the motor. I don't think it's been replaced, so it should be the same motor. Whatever it tells me on my data plate here um, blowers 3.6 full load compressor 11 so we'll get amp draws we'll get it started we'll see if anything hums when I turn it back on see if my 
first thought was right that the motor capacitor died on it or got weak i guess because it really probably at 16 it probably should have still started the motor honestly so it motor might hum like i said it did feel kind of tight when i first spun it and then it kind of freed up it's like it found a bad spot in the bearings in that motor i don't have any play side to side so I'll turn it back on and see what happens Started. And crawls up. So I'm out on delay right now. 3.3 amps. I'm gonna say 3.6. We're pretty close already with a cold motor. So we'll monitor and see what it does. We'll let it go through its cycle. Hopefully the compressor comes on here shortly. Uh, it's still pretty cool outside, so it should be calling for heat. If we have to, we can jump it out. Our terminals are down here, but um, we'll probably just give the thermostat a call. And uh, we'll get a temp drop on our condenser, which will turn into our evaporator in heat mode. Make sure reversing valve shifts sounds normal. And then we'll, like I said, I'm gonna monitor, so I'll probably shut it down. I do the PM part, turn it back on, let it run for the rest of the day. Uh, make sure it continues to run, and then we'll check it later on. So, number three LED stop flashing. So that means my time delay is over. So I'm assuming I don't have a call. So let's, um, I can check for a call. I don't know what's what, I have to look at the diagram, but I'll probably just go up and give it a call. It will have to, it'll have to run for a long period of time without jumping it. I just heard my circulator kick in. Flash on soft lockout low pressure. So it's gonna try again. Maybe it was the compressor humming, so I'm gonna have to get some gauges on this guy. I mean, it feels like I was moving some heat. Maybe not. We we'll get to try out my new temp clamp too. So we ought to be able to clamp right here somewhere. Maybe move around and see what's best. These uh, black iron pipes are hard to get temps on sometimes. And without this, it's even harder. So first things first, just gotta verify which line is which. We can see this line here on top. Runs right there into my discharge line. And you can't see it, but I did follow it. This is actually common suction right at the compressor. So I got everything connected. We got supplier, returner. I'm just trying something different. I'm using the geothermal uh, test on measure quick. So I've got, the weird thing is, is it shows entering and leaving water. But if I go to my toolbox, it says water supply LWT. And I interpret that as leaving water temperature. So I, I'm not exactly sure what that is, but that's how I'm going to take it. So I've got entering water and leaving water. My entering water, the so we're running six, about 66 degrees on both. 
and then we'll just let it time out from the thermostat and the board. This thing ought to come on. I do have my meter hooked up. I tried to set everything up in measure quick just to see how it was going to do. I've never done the geothermal test on here. I was going to set it up as just a regular heat pump, but I haven't done a whole lot of that either, honestly. Usually I just hook my gauges up like normal and see what my superheat subcooling is doing. As long as you know what your temperatures are, whether it's water coming in or air coming in, you should be able to get at least by rule of thumb close to your evaporator temperature or your condenser temperature. Dropping quick. Suction line. It's not really warm at all. Um, 64 degrees saturation on what should be. That should be. That's my. I'm actually reading discharge pressure. That's going to be my evaporator at this point. That's not that cold. What's my... Yeah, my return is at 65 degrees. The suction line going into the evaporator maybe felt slightly warm. Hmm, so... equalized pretty quick I'm happy with that so it didn't look like I got a restriction or anything I'm gonna need to flush my condenser or at this point my evaporator coil which is that water coil you can't even see it tied back in there so I don't know how if you had to get to that thing I don't know how you do it at least not on this but let's uh flush and see if anything comes out. We might pull the strainer and see what we can get out of it. crap on that side so maybe slight restriction now let's go um, this is my water in so let's flush it both ways I'm going to rinse that screen off Usually you get like what feels like calcium build up and rocks basically, but this was like a gummy kind of sticky oily type crap that was in there. 
So hopefully our strainer caught everything. And we can get some flow on this guy. Just like an airflow issue in a straight cooling unit, you'll have that low suction, but it looked it was awful low. We might be low on charge, but this guy only holds 72 ounces, I believe. So a couple pounds. We'll get our strainer back in. Turn it back on, let it time out, see what happens. Hopefully we get some flow out of this guy. Turn my circulator back on. Um, I haven't... This is going to be the circulator. Right there, that relay. So technically I could make my circ circulator run too. And, uh, let's give her another shot and see what happens. So let's jump our circulator out first. Carefully. Let it run. You can hear that water in the air moving. That circulator sounds different now. So, like I said, you can hear, I actually heard yesterday as well, um, the restrooms are on the other side of me, so I heard the pump on the unit behind me has actually got some bearing noise to it. I heard it through the wall yesterday. But this one was my main concern, and it doesn't sound like I have any flow at all. Or I didn't. So let's reset it. Um, we might see an improvement here. So I'm waiting on the time delay. There went my circulating pump. I actually feel moving, movement now. It's still gonna drop like crazy. I heard a noise coming from my blower. So is my reversing valve energized? I've got a warm discharge line. So my reversing valve is energized. I can feel my hot gas coming here. It's just not very hot. You can see we're gonna lock out again. Leaving water is getting colder, which means that is my evaporator. Just slightly colder, same way with the uh, air temperatures so looks like I'm going to be low um, that's kind of what I was getting at with my discharge pressure because my discharge pressure should have been my condenser which was here typically rule of thumb we're talking 30 degrees over ambient so if I'm drawing in you know 66 degree air I would be thinking 76, 86, 96 on my um, saturation for my head pressure so 72 ounces we'll calculate that out and go from there we'll add a few ounces at a time and see where we get so I don't know if y'all can hear that uh, blower's making noise again let's see if we can't get five amps the blower's going bad. The rating was 3.4 or 3.6 or something. It started off fairly normal, but after you run for a few minutes, at uh, 3.6, so that motor's gonna lock up again on me. That is, I'm sure I had a lockout, but I didn't see it because I killed the power because this guy was humming. But nonetheless, we found an issue um, we'll go over it with leak detector. The only thing I noticed was my caps were crappy. I don't even know what the hell I did with them. But they had the old plastic caps on here and they had some oil. 
because I didn't see any oil anywhere else or on the evaporator. I might have tossed the caps already because I intended on putting new ones on, but we might just be leaking from here. So I got my hose with the T here connected to my tank. Tank's closed. And we'll bleed. System pressure over to there. Then we'll turn our ball valve off. And then we'll open our tank. We'll get it set up on our scales, zeroed out. Um, I am feeding directly to the head of that compressor. I'm going to feed vapor. Um, we wouldn't be able to do that if this was a blend, but 22 I can do that with. Um, it'll be a whole lot easier on a compressor. Probably just going to start with um, 8 ounces or so, see how it reacts. And then it's probably going to take a couple pounds, I would assume. And then we'll see where we're at, check everything again. I'm just waiting on my time delay. The circulator's gonna come first. I do have a bad spot in that motor. So it's normal, 3.5. Uh, we're gonna have to have a new motor. There goes my circulator. Zeroed out on the scale. We're gonna feed it some gas. Yeah. Um, we'll start to hear a slight noise out of that motor in a little bit, and that amp draw is going to climb. But this is a bar area, so it's going to have to be running. So I've got to get it operational at least. Two ounces. Go a whole lot slower when you're doing vapor as well. But what it take? We're just going to monitor, like I said, that. Uh, Saturation temp on the high side is going to start climbing. I should start to feel the change. I'm getting a hot discharge line going through my evaporator now. It's going to kick the low pressure again. Well, that was the soft, uh, soft lockout. So it, it will try one more time. If it hits that low pressure, it's going to go to a hard lockout and won't do anything. See my motor in starting to climb. It's just gonna keep climbing. The uh, like I said, this thing's got to run, so that's why I'm charging it first. I will go through and do a leak check and see if I can find anything. But I mean, the evaporator was dry, so we got multiple issues here. I'm gonna reset our lockout. There's your. That's what I heard yesterday. Yeah, the motor's done. I was hoping it'd last till I got it. He's partially charged. But I got a little less than a pound in it. Um, I'm going to have to get a motor and then we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and try to get this blower motor out of here. Got just a plug here. So it's just going to pop out with the screws. I love the pine tools bed. This makes everything easier because everything's a different size. Well, there she is. But it just hooks on the back there. I'm running out of room in my tiny spot here. in the back kind of sucks. There she goes. I'm surprised nobody smelled that guy yet. He didn't get in the blower wheel. That would have been an airflow issue. He had a bad day. Either one of these guys. How about that? So... Now that I got it loose, let's get it out. I've uh, typical train fashion. I'm having trouble getting hold of the train. Sounds like it goes to somebody's voicemail. It says they're not available, which is very helpful. 
So I'm gonna pull the motor, get everything disassembled. Um, that way, train don't call me back, I'm gonna go find the motor. The motor's steaming hot right now too. I just dropped my bit. Probably gonna have to clean that shaft up and get the wheel off. It ain't gonna slide off here like that. So let's do that. Let's uh clean up the wheel and go from there and get the thing out of there. So that shaft will move inside of there. I got a fairly clean spot where the shaft or where the hub was. We'll clean up the rest and that thing ought to slide off. Sitting flat on that hub. Make sure we're not going to hit our set screw hole. Get her evened up. Tighten her down and pull her off. And you want to make sure you're centered on that shaft, but because the shaft is up here, it should center itself pretty well. Nice and easy without a fight. Water's hot too. Have the motor. It is a factory motor and it does its spinny thing. We checked it before we left. It's going to sit in there just like that. We'll tighten the belly band around it and we'll shove it back in. So I've got it set about where I want it. We want to set my belly band up on probably the bottom edge of that uh, air vent whatever you want to call it there. So we're gonna pull it up and tighten it down. You can see they tighten the crap out of it, bent the bolt, but it's gonna go in just like this in these. So I want my electrical right in here. And we've got it split in between the two. So it should be right where we need it. So we're not quite locked in place. We also wanna make sure there's indentions here that you're in all the way around for all three legs. We got it just tight enough where we can still slide it. So we'll slide it up to where it needs to be and then tighten everything down. Probably good, right in that area. set it um, I need just about an inch and a half or so Any 
anybody catch what I did there? Because I had it in the wrong side. So there's no hub on this side to stop me. Yeah, so I feel like a dumbass. So we can loosen it up again and go back to our original position. And this thing ought to slide right in there. So the only difference with the new one, it's 3.7 amps and it's a 10 micro fare capacitor. So I got a good track capacitor and then we'll shove that guy back in there and see what measure quick tells us. Yeah, I know I'm gonna have to get down into my blower section. So I'm just gonna secure the wires in here a good ways down. Everything's tight and secure. That way, when I slide it back in, you don't have to mess with anything back inside. All right, we do need to figure out our rotation before um, securing those. But if I can get secured to here, I won't have to have my arms up inside here trying to do stuff. So we'll figure out a rotation, get those guys tied. I'm going to figure out the wiring. Alright, so I had my... I had the wire diagram pictured on my phone. It is counterclockwise lead end. So, this is my lead end. And this is going to be counterclockwise. Which is the direction I need to go. So now that everything's secured, I don't have to mess with any of that. And should have some combination we'll have to look at what the old diagram is but basically it's just height is going to be one of your black red orange or blue and then the other line is going to be white i believe so the orange blue and red will be your different speeds black is going to be high typically on everything i don't think i've seen anything not without a black wire or black not being high so probably these are your medium speeds medium high medium low and red's gonna be your low well I just keep screwing up the wires the motor needs to rotate this way my wires aren't gonna reach down to my control panel. So, let's do that. Battery's done. Still gonna be short on my wires. Well, that's helpful. So, wires come through here, and then they feed back through that hole. So, what I'm probably gonna do is 
might have to have a wire connection somewhere. So I'll probably cut them and put um, male spades on the other end and have good connections either probably right here just in case you ever had to replace the motor again you can unplug them and the new one will wire straight up we've got blue and orange missing so we'll take blue and orange away I'm just assuming my colors I don't know what I'm not sure I gotta trace them out still so we've still got a low speed a high speed and then looks like yellow is going to be line here so white will be my line and then i just got to figure out well, we're not using red either so red's off so we're just running one single speed looks like it comes off at 9340 relay so first of all let's get rid of our wires we're not using we've already determined our high speed's black white is going to be our line other line and these terminals here are going away. So we'll just cap them with some blue wire knots. I'm not gonna waste a wire, uh, a good wire nut or a good crimp fitting on them. Um, I don't have, I don't think my male spades are gonna be big enough for this wire so I think what I'm going to do is instead use an actual crimp wire nut. I'll do the same thing here and yellow was my line on this one so we'll cap those the same way short one blue wire nut. These are smaller wires, so I'm gonna cut a little more off of them. Make sure I get a good connection. That's a good connection. That thing ain't coming off there. Same way here. We're gonna get everything cleaned up. get to them so if you need them, you can get a meter in here and check the voltage so we're all wired in I protected my wires there so it can't rub protect my wires down here um, all this is a little excessive you don't necessarily have to do this but I know the next time I mess with this it's gonna be another dead motor it's not gonna be something stupid in between so I got my wire nuts back here everything's secured so if you needed to get to the voltage you could to check voltage at the motor this is our line coming in and then the other line feeds like I said to that 9340 relay right there so here my blowers running sounds good I'm gonna get back here I should have left myself just enough to get my clamp on there maybe just a too little. There you go. 2.3.0 amps. So we're in a 3 amps. It was rated the same as the other, I believe, was the rating. We're going to wait on the time delays. It was like 3.74, a little bit higher, 3.7. So I'm at 3, 3 amps. I'm happy with that. We'll let our time delay come out and get all my probes turned back on. So I got a pump, compressor will be going next. Still three amps on the motor. Let's see if my 
temperature change as far as the air coming into my what is my condenser so I'm 66 degrees so I'll probably be looking at somewhere around 96 on my saturation temperature about a pound in it right now we're just charging slow I'm, I'm in no rush I'm gonna let it take its time as long as it doesn't start kicking down on low pressure again we will freeze up at this point but this number is going to keep climbing until we go out on low pressure so we're still adding slowly looking good Honestly, I have no load in the building right now. Um, it's that about the temperature outside where it doesn't really need anything, so nothing's really running. And my loop's running a little cool. Um, I mean, my return air's cool as well, but nothing else in the building's calling. So I've got no load. And even if I were to switch it into cooling mode, because that's really probably what they would need. With this kind of temperature outside, it's probably be cooling. Um, I'm going to be dealing with the same 66 air or water, so it doesn't really matter what I do. I'm looking at the same numbers, so we're just going to let it take. It looks like it's—I mean, it was pretty low. Pulling into a vacuum like that, I've got about two pounds, and we're starting to look a little more normal. My loop's only getting a one degree. drop across that coil superheats high right now of course I'm not feeding liquid like I should be so I would expect that and we got a decent we're getting decent supplier so 16 degree rise right now we're just going to continue to monitor and see what she looks like I stopped adding right now. I'm still looking a little low on my um, evaporator temperature. Uh, condenser, I'll put two and a half pounds in it. Condenser uh, is a little high, but I'm also um, I'm in heat mode. My, I'm on my discharge line, so I'm doing a three degree drop across my coil or across my evaporator right now. Uh, in cooling mode, I would expect 8 to 10 degrees across the water pool. So if I had a flow problem, you'd think that number would be higher. Uh, super heat still high. So we're just going to let everything stabilize. Um, we should be looking with my entering water temp in 67. If we're going to roll a thumb, we'd say 35 uh, saturation. So I'm at, so 32 would be 35 degree difference. So this is pretty close actually right now. Uh, like I say, the water flow is going to depend on my pump and everything else. Uh, I don't think I have any more restriction. There could be a slight restriction in the coil, but you would think just like you would with a, a an air cooled evaporator, the temperature would be cold uh, colder coming out. Here right now, the biggest thing would probably be my super heat, which is starting to drop as well. So I just want to watch that, make sure we don't kill the compressor. So I'll put almost three pounds in it. Everything normalized pretty well. Uh, I mean, that head pressure is. By rule of thumb, 30 degrees over him, and I'm more like 50 degrees, but honestly, we could have uh, some airflow issues. I also could be, I'm shoved back in the duct. I'm drawing some air from right here, which is warmer down here. So, I mean, it's close enough. Plus, it's got a leak. So, I mean, if we're slightly overcharged, it's not really that concerning what everything else is doing here at a four degree on my loop super 
overheat 24 and I'm good with that number as long as that's going to continue to drop obviously and I'm doing 31 32 degree temperize so I mean, I'm pretty happy with that I think this is a four ton is what I got it set up for um, that can't be right I'm showing 71,000 BTUs. Four times should be 48. That was a guess. But, let's, I mean, I'm pretty happy with it right now. What I'm probably going to do is go ahead and let the temperature warm up. So I'm getting towards 70 degrees on my return air. And uh, I'm not going to put any more charge in it. I'm gonna let that temperature come up. I've got it turned all the way up. And then uh, I'll probably switch it to cooling mode. I'm not concerned about my blower. The blower is gonna be good now. So that was my biggest concern. Like I said, this is a commercial building. So as far as, there's gonna be issues right? as far as airflow and everything else. The water flow seems to be normal on cooling, at least from what I know. Uh, and tell me how you guys do this on some, something like this, but I, I typically see 8 to 10 degree rise across my condenser and cooling. Like I said, it's kind of weird because I'm in one of those in-between periods where nothing else in the building's really running. My loop's kind of cold, but my building's kind of cold too. They don't really run heat. Like I said, it's a bar, so the heat stays at like 65 degrees maybe. And uh, the cooling they keep on I, hell they've got the they've got the front doors open now so I got in cooling mode I'm still kind of low on my evaporator and my head pressure dropped it's about 74 73 degrees in the space super heats low but even and out there's no real good way to get temperatures on this thing I'm looking at 21 degree drop so it's very possible that my condenser is okay my evaporator does actually have some airflow issues like I said this isn't the best setup uh, just because of where I'm at I'm drawing from in here my temperature's right there this thing runs 90s over and 45s and then 90s up 90s again back over to here and then runs across and uh, basically up to the floor above me so this could have been off from day one we're just gonna see where we get to keep monitoring now that we're in cooling mode so I'm still low on my evaporator I'm at about five degrees on my loop. Uh, super heats around two and a half or three. I've got a 20, almost 21 degree temp drop. I'm going to leave it as is now. Uh, we put three and a half pounds in it. I'm going to get my leak detector in here and go over everything and see if I can't find a leak. Um, best way to do this would be pull it out, obviously weigh it, pull it out and weigh it back in. But they just needed this thing running. So we're going to just, the my readings are a little off. I don't check a whole lot of these water source heat pumps. So especially with my conditions right now of everything, I mean, the 66 degree condenser water and which could be affected by my water flow. I don't know how this was ever said. These things have been here forever. So I'm running a little bit low on the superheat, but with, I mean, that cold of an evaporator, I mean, I'm running 60, what am I, return air, 60 something degrees, 64 degrees. I'm doing a 20 degree drop. So, I mean, it doesn't really need heating or cooling at this point. I'm gonna leave it alone at this, right now. Uh, I'm fairly happy with all my readings. We'll probably check it again once we get some warmer temperatures and some load. 
and let's just scan it with my leak detector and see if we can't pinpoint a leak. I have a feeling the valve cores were leaking and we may have another leak floating around here. We'll get the DR82 warmed up. And then let's see what we got over here. I didn't see any oil. Come on, light. Unless it's on the back side there where the TXV connects. There she's warmed up. It's gonna be hard to get directly on anything back there, but I mean, if it's back there, damn thing gotta come out to even attempt to repair it with the age of these things. And they're not gonna, right there, right there. She didn't like that right at the bottom. So we got something going on back here. And I don't see anything right here, but. I don't expect to get too much more with a hit like that. That's probably where everything's at. It's going down here. And my shredders are probably leaking too. Actually, no. That's the high side there, so. The low side's not leaking either. Well, I got new caps for you guys anyways. I'm not going to go over everything in this condenser. Hell, it could be leaking in the... Leaking in the water cool. Yeah, if you had something on the condenser or high side, there'd be oil everywhere. Down in that insulation. We're not getting nothing. Let's try. Let's try medium. Right there. It's like the bottom little cap tube or something. I mean, hell, you can kind of see. Let's go back. Let's go down to. Let's go to low. Right there. Looks like it's lining up with where that bottom cap tube goes in. So we definitely got a leaky evaporator. So let's go about wrap this one up. Found us a leak. We got new caps. We're gonna let the customer know what's going on. Um, while I had in charge, like I said, best to weigh it in. Um, you're not, especially with something like this, the rules of thumb are going to be thrown off just because of my load conditions and everything that's going on in the building right now because this is kind of the in-between time. It's not hot. It's not cold. They don't really need either. They A lot of times this time of year, they open the doors. 
uh, and these things will cool anyways because there is heat load in the building with people but um, we got fairly close to our rules of thumb that's why they're rules of thumb they're not always 100 percent correct but we do have at least an operating air conditioner now we'll let the customer know what they got going on uh who is it nighthawk says tell me what a bad technician i am uh tell me how y'all deal with heat pumps or water source heat pumps or regular heat pumps i don't deal with a whole lot of them so this is uh not something i do all the time but pretty simple uh concept it's not complicated you just got to know what you're looking at as far as evaporator and condenser and then go from there leave the trade better than you found it see y'all next time